Good evening, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the future of wallet security. Uh, and we have with us a diverse panel, uh, panel representing the infrastructure and consumer space of wallet. Uh, we have Monty from MetaMask. Uh, we have Anirin from Failsafe. And Rohan from Biconomy and Zen from Web3R. Right? Uh, just, uh, well, let's just start with a quick round of introduction. I'm Annie and I have web partnerships at Web3R. Maybe if the panel could just do a quick introductions of themselves. For sure. Um, but before I do so, can we trouble people to turn off the mics uh, as we are, uh, as we're not talking in particular, because the feedback seems to be relatively strong. Um, I'm Zen, one of the co-founders of Web3R. That's me. Uh, and yeah, hi, uh, I'm Ron this side. Uh, I lead growth for Bioeconomy, and we're building uh, account abstraction infrastructure. And uh, yeah, we have the entire stack in-house now. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Aniron. I look after a team called Failsafe, and we build wallet security tools. Good evening, everyone. I'm Monty. I'm uh, from MetaMask. I've been there for two years, and uh, I'm on the accounts team as an engineer. All right. Thank you, everyone, for the introduction. Yeah. So I think let's just get started right to it. So wallet security, the whole stack, right? The whole infrastructure stack. You have key management, transaction monitoring, transaction simulations, pre-transaction scanning, post, and host set of tools. Uh, and could you tell us exactly where Failsafe kind of lies in the stack of the whole infrastructure? Yeah, we're seeing some incredible innovations today uh, in the wallet security space. Uh, as you've mentioned, pre-transaction scanning or simulation, also transaction monitoring that's able to help wallet owners, especially if they're enterprises, identify when something malicious is about to happen. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the solutions in the market today uh, do not account for the fact that an attacker will never be in the code path. Uh, an attacker will never be using an RPC that, uh, of, of a wallet that you're using. So what Failsafe does is we're a last line of defense. We really are a mechanism that is a Failsafe that looks at your assets. That, sorry. It looks at your assets, uh, and what we do is we monitor the mempool. So all mempool transactions involving your wallet address, we look at them, and let's say we're looking after your wallet. Uh, what we'll do is in the event that we see a malicious transaction happening, we'll actually intervene. So we drain your wallet faster than the attacker can. All right, all right, that's really interesting. So it's something like you drain the flash bot that drains it faster uh, than the attackers to protect the user's wallet, right? Um, I think let's look at it from a consumer perspective. Of course, we know MetaMask, everybody's aware of MetaMask. It is the largest consumer application in Web3. Uh, so from a security perspective for the consumers, what are some of the key things that you're looking uh, at or key perspectives that you have? Yeah, so uh, we're, we value security really uh, importantly. Uh, we try to warn users um, about potential uh, risks that they're taking ahead of time. And we try to like add a lot of friction to, to easy uh, boards that they can hit, right? So we, we try to protect the consumers like that by adding friction. Uh, and with the new accounts uh, keeping API available in the MetaMask Flask build, so this is an experimental build in uh, MetaMask, we're offering uh, different account types uh, that can augment the security of uh, the user's account as well. So like adding friction for users to protect their uh, uh, wallets, right? Um, Rohan, you mentioned about like account abstraction. So we know Biconomy is deep in it. And account abstraction can be used for so many things uh, from UX and account management. And from a security or wallet security perspective, what is your view on how account abstraction can uh, be used? Uh, yeah, sure. So I think, uh, you know, if you look at account abstraction overall, you know, the central piece in the entire stack is the smart account that you have. Right, which is deployed on chain. Now, the best part about this thing is that it is extendable to any any format, any fashion that you want. You know, these accounts come in a bare shell way. You know, you can have multi-sig uh, signature uh, algorithms on top of it. You know, you can have uh, you know BLS signatures, Schnorr signatures instead of normal ECDSA. You can have two-factor authentication. You know, for mobile-first devices, you can have pass keys. You know, which use Apple Conclave. 
you know as methods of security so you know um, what else is say is that you know everything is possible you know because it's a smart account in the picture and you know we are building these modules so multisig is going to be live soon you know uh, we are already working on pass keys and you know we are super open to partner with you know folks like failsafe you know who bring you know more security features on top of our existing infra you know so like like you know if, if we are like building at the downstream anyone can build more security at upstream level with us all right thank you yeah i think that's also very interesting adding this multiple layers for the security multiple factors uh, that definitely adds to the security level uh, Zen, could you also talk a little bit about web3 odds view on security from key management perspective so i think our view is very similar to montes and metamasks in particular in that um you have different levels of security for different levels and different classes of customers as they first come on board in particular you know you want the most basic level of security because the user has nothing in the account they're not concerned about it at that point in time but as they increment the value that they have in their account the security has to accordingly do so just like how you might improve the security of your apple login by adding multiple factors adding different account types similar to um uh similar to that i think and introducing more and more friction i think that's very similar to our approach as well introducing more friction as kind of uh users get a little bit more advanced all right thank you yeah so um that's very interesting uh zen i think uh, just looking at it from like a security versus like a user experience that's also often tend to seen as like you know you got to have one or the other right uh and i just want to ask anybody from the panel to get your views on where do you think you know you can draw the line what is the sweet spot between security and user experience uh yeah so i think um there the sweet spots pretty much a spectrum it really depends on what the user is trying to do so from the perspective of like a web3 gamer uh if i'm trying to claim some kind of game item and i need to perform a transaction i won't i don't want to be bothered by like a lot of warnings and stuff however if i'm like a, a yield farmer where i'm about to interact with a, a liquidity pool that's recently been deployed by by a, a, an account that's funded by tornado cash i would probably want to know uh, a lot of these information prior to transacting with this so i think it's uh, the sweet spot it's a, it's a spectrum yeah yeah i mean like uh, you know i'll add on to that so you know uh, like we have been like working with you know web3 auth for quite a while now right and you know uh, most of our customers uh, use web3 auth so this is again also a feedback right uh, so you know like web3 auth you know divides the key into multiple you know shards and you know use mpc in play right again it's a fashion of security that you know you don't have a single point of failure at any point of time but uh, you know then how does the key reconstruction work or you know how like what is the speed around it or what is the user experience around it you know that is something you know uh, i think is very close to that equation that you know do you need security or do you need ux right so uh, over there you know uh, what we find out is that you know mpc is really secure in that way but it's also very easy for users to onboard you know they just need a email or some kind of auth and you know they get a wallet like this right you know similar to that you know uh, with byconomy you know smart contract deployment is way easy now if you have to add you know any security module on top of it it's even easier right so that's how we are seeing it that you know technically it shouldn't be a choice technically a user should be able to get both right so again uh, the efforts are in that direction so with uh, it's interesting that you bring this up in particular uh, rohan uh, because you know on, on on twitter as of recent months there's been a lot of talk with about account abstraction and also account abstraction versus npc in particular but economy actually represents a very interesting um angle because you guys are a account abstraction sdk and you guys in particular are on the ground you guys see who's integrating what what's your perspective on account abstraction versus npc or whatever and all that do you do you think there exists a world that both exists so is it more of one or the other curious to hear actually everybody's thoughts on this <laughs> so uh you know you caught me it's a trick question <laughs> so uh i'll say you know that i think you know uh, vitalik's tweet went very viral 
right you know where he was like you know like mpc has you know xyz flaws etc etc you know uh, but we feel that you know uh, both of them represent two different ways of technology like you know like in the end all of us are trying to solve the same problem like you know with mpc also we are trying to solve easy onboarding you know easy security with account abstraction also we are trying to solve easy onboarding easy security right it's just a question of you know what is the preferred implementation by that specific use case and by the specific developer right so you know uh, we don't want to mandate our users into you know using one over the other we are pretty modular in that fact that you know whatever makes sense for your use case we will support you you know no matter what your use case is if you want mpc we got mpc if you want aa we got aa so that's convenient because you guys don't take any opinion then you guys leave the opinion to the developer <laughs> yeah yeah well, monte how about oh, honorin how, how yeah just that? just to quickly round this one off uh, i don't think that this is an age old debate it's convenience versus security I think we need to look at it slightly differently. You look at the Web2 world, you look at big tech, it's always been the responsibility of the platform to provide security solutions for the end user. Uh, I think that will continue to be the case moving forward. Um, that's precisely why tools like MPC have been built. It's exactly why account abstraction. It's an effort to marry both of those and have the best of both. So I'm excited because we're, like, we're no longer seeing these as two opposing fields now. We're seeing this as, okay, it's our job as the platform providers, as the builders. Like, it is our job to keep our end users safe. Um, so that's what I'm excited about. All right, all right. Yeah, that's very interesting. And I think for, to summarize, I think one is obviously it still remains on the spectrum depending on your use case. Uh, I think the second part is giving some flexibility to the platform owners to let them choose what kind of where on that spectrum they can uh, they can kind of lie uh, in terms of security securing the funds for the users right uh, the next one is around you know self custodial versus custodial is it really about security or is it more about trust or you know where do you see more people leaning towards I'll go first on this um, I'm not sure if there are any folks from Polygon in the room but we recently found out that like a big part of their funds are now being protected by a custodial service. And this is like, it, it marks an incredible shift for a network to be pushing the responsibility of ownership over to a trusted third party. It is a signal. It's a signal that, okay, these third parties can be trusted and we're happy to do so. And from an enterprise level, I think we're seeing that across the board. You speak to a C C CFO, you speak to a CEO, at the end of the day, they will opt to transfer risk rather than mitigate risk every time. I can guarantee that every time. So, yeah, uh, just, just to finish this off, I think that it, I think it really ultimately depends on use case and how much you're willing to pay. Um, for, for, we're seeing that the narrative is shifting more towards self-custody with a certain amount of uh, programmatic policy making in place. So, for example, you're seeing platforms like Fireblocks. They are coming up with a narrative around the idea that Actually, you are the sole owner of your assets at the end of the day. And they're adding on top of that and saying, hey, we're working with the best insurers in the world. So that's, that's my take. I think that it's, it's a case of, again, finding a middle ground, but still being sure that the, 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 the fail safes and the mechanisms are in place to ensure that only the users have access and custody of their assets. So I'm curious to hear from Monty, right? Uh, MetaMask is MetaMask standard and MetaMask institutional. Um, uh, oh, is it MetaMask? Yeah, MetaMask Institutional, which, 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 which creates a demographic of two segments of users, essentially. What's the AUM on either, and which one's larger? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have any other data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I believe like um, it's not one or the other. Uh, both custodial and self-custodial solutions will exist. Um, so for the next maybe 100 million users, they might not be willing or ready to do self-custody. They might be trying to invest in crypto and use some kind of uh, investment vehicle to do it. And that, that itself will be some kind of a self, like that itself will be a custodial type of solution. Uh, but for me, um, in my opinion, I, I believe everyone should move towards self-custody. It's always uh, safer. 
Uh, but there are still a lot of UX type of problems that needs to be solved to onboard the next um, billion users, let's say. Uh, and I believe uh, account attraction can be one of those key solutions to do this. Uh, users are probably, non-savvy non users are probably like very wary about like, uh, how do you keep your private key safe? But right? account abstraction isn't necessarily non-custodial, is it? So if you hold your, <laughs> so if you hold the private key to the account itself, and you only, you're the only one that holds it, then it is uh, self-custodial. Yeah, it, it's also a blend, right? A, cus a custodian can also use account abstraction to do the same thing. But yes, um, this is one solution that can be used for for both. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, you know, add to that. So, uh, you know, custody versus non-custodial, right? So non-custodial, you know, aligns perfectly with the entire ethos of why, you know, we all are a part of Web3 in general, right? You know, we want ownership, we want, you know, custody, and, you know, we want to be like, you know, the sole decision maker of what is happening with our assets, right? And, you know, we are slowly seeing more adoption towards this culture where people want to own their assets, they want to own their keys, they want to own their wallets. But again, the infra is sort of lacking in a way that it's not very easy to do so. It's not very intuitive to do so. But you know, as I uh, and mentioned, you know, about uh, Fireblocks, you know. So yesterday only Fireblocks released their non-custodial wallet, right? And uh, you know, if you see, you know, then they're trying to basically capture both sides of the market, right? And the concept of a custodian has been very popular and has existed in history of trade fire. You know, like, you know, you look at insurance companies, you look at, you know, banks like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, you know, they always have had custodians, right? So for institutions, having custodian, having regulation makes sense. But, you know, I still feel that, you know, for individual folks who understand the value of, you know, uh, having self-custody, you know, uh, it's the way to go forward. All right. All right. That's a pretty interesting, diverse <laughs> set of thoughts and differing set of thoughts around self-custodial versus custodia. Uh, I think before we uh, kind of conclude this, I just want to, you know, because the wallet security space is evolving so much and things have been changing so fast recently. And I just want to ask each of the panel members what their view or what is something that you're, you know, that's coming up next that you think is really interesting that you're really looking forward to uh, seeing. I guess I'll go first. Um, so I'm just going to show my own product, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, on MetaMask Flask, so this is a developer version of MetaMask. Uh, we have a keyring API that uh, developers can use right now to create different types of accounts that you can use within MetaMask. Uh, so I highly encourage uh, developers to, to check it out. Yeah, I think account abstraction is, is very exciting. Right now it's very, very clunky, uh, super clunky. Um, but we're excited to see the new innovations and the, the, the new types of products that are built on top of account abstraction and the kind of use cases that that's going to be able to afford uh, end users. Right now, no one wants to deal with a private key. Uh, no one, like, people are just very happy to set up a, a wallet via an email account. And that's the gold standard. That's, that's what we should be endeavoring to achieve uh, for our end users. So I think through, through greater focus on user experience, um, we will only see greater adoption through that. Yeah, uh, on that, you know, uh, my perspective is that, you know, I look at security on two levels. One is on-chain, other is off-chain, right? Uh, on an on-chain level, you know, uh, from the account abstraction perspective, you know, we are heading towards, you know, building modular infra, where our infra can be plugged and played with, you know, uh, multiple players and providers out there. Right. And, you know, we can use services like, you know, burner wallets. We can use services like, you know, MPC. We can use services like distributed key generation, etc. you know, on chain to, uh, you know, maybe stealth addresses, maybe ZK, right, to uh, support the security. But if you go on the off chain side, you know, off chain side, you know, we have services like redefine, you know, uh, which are very important for the ecosystem, which help the user understand that, you know, the protocol that they're interacting with, you know, is it malicious or not? You know, then we have services like Tenderly, you know, uh, that help you with transaction simulation. Then we have services like, uh, uh, I, I forgot the name, but you know, that service basically allows you to understand the signature that you're signing. The signature is not human readable right now. Again, it's, it has been like talked about a lot. It's a very simple problem to solve, but it's still not very commonly adopted, right? 
So I think all of these are big or small security enhancements that you know I see uh, getting adopted, you know, uh, to to a huge extent in the future. Uh, so for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna show failsafe because failsafe is quite innovative actually. Um, you've got uh, you know you've got your transaction scanners, your transaction simulation, pre post failsafe lives not just post transaction scanning, post post in particular. Um, they're basically like flash bots for, uh, but to drain your account instead of, I mean, to protect your account instead of kind of like draining your account. Uh, in particular. And whilst, you know, they do have to play kind of like a game with others, uh, kind of like a gas game. I do think it's quite innovative in, 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 in their approach. And it's not intrusive um, to kind of integrating with as well. So with that, I'll give it to you, Adi. I think, yeah, thanks, everyone. So I think overall, for the things that people are interested in, it's, it's a whole range of things, going from making the whole infrastructure more user-friendly, accessible, and I think plugging in the different pieces of the infrastructure that adds to the security, such as failsafe and a bunch of other things. And that's all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Thank you.